Shalom. Welcome to Issachar Forum, a prophetic think tank. My name is Les Lawrence. Glad to have you back with us. Uh, we're uh, celebrating uh, this weekend Passover, and today is Resurrection Day, celebrating first fruits, uh, which was uh, part of the original Passover, and it's also part of uh, the fulfillment in, in Jesus. Yeshua, the Messiah, is the Passover lamb. He yeah, it was unleavened by sin, so therefore he fulfills unleavened bread, and he also is the first fruit from the dead, uh, fulfilling that part of the spring feast. So we celebrate that and we honor him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the sacrifice, uh, not only of your son Jesus, but your own sacrifice and letting your son uh, come and, and be born as a man and die in this earth and then be raised from the dead. <clears throat> we celebrate uh, the victory. We celebrate the deliverance and the salvation that is provided through the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world for all who believe in him. We know that believing is necessary just as it was for Abraham. Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. Thank you, Father. Pray you'll bless us as we endeavor to be sons and daughters of Issachar to understand the times and know what God's people should do. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, your Son, we pray. Amen. Well, the picture on the screen here is a nice picture of Jerusalem. Um, it's a sunrise, beautiful sunrise. And I like to point out the the uh, construction cranes. <laughs> uh, they're always, every time we go to Israel and Jerusalem, they're all over the city. One time I counted something like nine different cranes at the same time. And, of course, here in the foreground is the eastern gate. And uh, that's the gate that was walled up by the Muslims because they uh, knew the prophecies that the Messiah would enter Jerusalem through the eastern gate. And they also put a, a graveyard in front of it. But uh, when when the one who is the resurrection and the life comes, <laughs> the graves will open and, and there will be an earthquake, the Bible says, and he'll go right through the eastern gate, just as the Bible says, as God prophesied. So we pray for the peace of Jerusalem and for rain all the time. Well, here's my blog. Uh, you can find my blog at uh, ElishaVision.com. Yeah, that's Elisha, not Elijah, but Elisha, vision.com. And I did two this week. One was called Understanding Hamas. And uh, one of the main things I, I explained in here is that uh, the word uh, of the name of that terrorist organization in Gaza, Hamas, is actually an acronym for their official name. But the acronym actually forms the word Hamas, which coincidentally happens to be a Hebrew word used in the Old Testament uh, in Hebrew for the word violence. And uh, I, uh, I think it's important that you know that. Um, the, uh, like there's Proverbs 11.5 says, Jehovah tests the righteous, but the wicked and the one who, who loves violence, his soul hates. And that is, of course, Hamas is the word. It's the, it's the word used in Noah. Uh, the, the days where the men were so uh, Hamas, so violent that, God uh, judge the earth. Well, uh, that's just part of the thing. You can read the blog to get the rest of it. And then the other blog I did this week uh, was called Pass Over Easter? Question mark. And my question was, do Passover and Easter uh, conflict with one another? As a Christian Zionist, this is important to me. And there's three reasons why they agree. And one reason, a huge reason, that they conflict. Uh, it's not really that complicated. And uh, I went ahead and explained that the, uh, the Feast of Passover is actually three feasts in the spring in the, in the uh, Hebrew calendar. And they're listed in Leviticus 23. You can read the, yourself and read about them. But the first three feasts, as I was praying a minute ago, uh, refer to Passover, the, the uh, lamb that was slain and the blood was put on the doorpost and so forth. And the death angel passed over the homes of those who had the blood on the doorpost. And, and, but the judgment of God against the firstborn was against all who did not have the blood on the doorpost, Egyptians or, or Jews, Hebrews. And uh, so, uh, but, the, but Jesus fulfilled that. He became the lamb himself. So the, the lamb of Passover in Exodus is actually a type pointing to the future prophetically of the real lamb of God, who would take away the sins of the world. Wonderful promise and fulfillment in Jesus. He also fulfilled unleavened bread because he 
wasn't leavened by sin. And, uh, and then the third thing, th third spring feast is first fruits, and Jesus fulfilled that as well. By the way, on my blog, uh, in, this, in this particular one, you see radio interview. If you click there, that blue radio interview, those two words, it'll take you to an interview where I explain about 10 minutes each of the seven feasts of Jehovah. They're listed in uh, Leviticus 23. It's also further down uh, on my blog here, if I uh, take a minute just to run you down past my books, uh, down in this list down here, it has the uh, the also the radio uh, broadcast. Where is it? Am I am I not seeing it? Um, there, audio, the Feast of Jehovah. So that's there all the time on my blog, but it's in the most recent blog right now, and you can see it. So there's Elisha Vision Commentary. Well, let's move on. All right, the uh, the uh, election, of course, was last week. Netanyahu won. That was good news. And uh, here's an article in the Wall Street Journal that said Israeli millennials are tilting right and helped elect Netanyahu. That's interesting. Uh, and I wonder if we're going to see that trend in the U.S. All the talk about millennials is that they're socialists and they're, they're liberals and extreme liberals and so forth. Uh, wouldn't it be interesting if there was a beginning of a of a dawning of light and truth in their minds that they would actually recognize that uh, that uh, God's blessing is on uh, the United States when we uh, stick to our Judeo-Christian uh, heritage, and uh, so that's that's I just thought that was an interesting uh, fact there, um, and here with uh, plea for healing, the president officially taps Netanyahu to form the new coalition. The way it works in Israel is that the the uh, president, who's mo mainly a figurehead, his one main legal uh, obligation is after an election, he has to actually designate who it is will try to form a coalition government because uh, there's never been a party that had 61 votes of the 120 in the Knesset. So, so uh, the party with the most votes, usually uh, their leader is selected to, to form the next government with a coalition of the smaller parties. And and that was uh, accomplished this week with Netanyahu being chosen to form the next government. So that's good news. Pray that he'll be successful and be blessed in the government. Well, if you've been watching the news at all today, you've heard about the terrible uh, mass attacks in Sri Lanka, uh, where oh, I, last I heard it was 235 people were killed. And uh, one jihad mass murderer was well known a well-known Muslim preacher who said the God of Islam created the land for the Muslims. Uh, there's a picture of him in, in a, on a TV uh, program. And, of course, if, if their God made it for the Muslim, that leads out to Christians and Jews and everybody else. But, uh, and, uh, of course, that's no surprise. We understand that, that there is not only in radical Islam, but in other quarters there's growing... Uh, persecution of Jews and Christians. In fact, more Christians are being martyred in this century. Uh, the rate is higher than it's been since uh, the first century. So a terrible time of persecution of Christians seems to be getting worse. We need to be aware of that and pray. Well, uh, the U.S. international maps now include the Golan Heights as part of Israel. Here's the map. And uh, this area right here uh, used to be uh, considered uh, disputed territory, but now the U.S. has recognized Israel's annexation of that territory uh, after the Six-Day War. Actually, it wasn't until 1981 that Israel uh, annexed it, but uh, and it wasn't until just this year that uh, the United States actually recognized that it's part of Israel and redrew the maps. Uh, I'm looking for the day when this area right here is redrawn as part of Israel instead of uh, instead of the West Bank. Because this is actually uh, Judea from Jerusalem south is Judea from Jerusalem north is Samaria, according to the Bible. And, uh, of course, that's the future of Israel. Uh, it's not going to end up being a Palestinian state. It's going to be end up, according to the Bible, it's going to end up being part of Israel. Meanwhile, uh, Jared Kushner announced that the, the peace plan long awaited from President Trump will be revealed after Ramadan, which brings it in, into June sometime. Uh, before they'll actually announce uh, the plan. And we're still praying for that, that God will lead the leaders in the, in the administration to do the right thing there. 
Here's the interesting headline. Uh, Hamas and Hezbollah are, have set up a new march of return militia on the Lebanese-Israeli border, uh, just like they've been doing in Gaza for the past year. Now they plan on bringing people up to the fence and riot and throw stones and throw hand grenades and things over the, the, the border of, of Lebanon and Israel. Uh, I have a hunch that Israel is not going to allow that to happen. And that's a serious challenge, of course. Another Deb Kapow article. Syrian military officials uh, have now criticized Russia for the first time, alleging Moscow colluding with Israel because uh, Moscow didn't shoot down uh, the, uh, the planes and the missiles the last time Israel attacked, which was only about a week ago, uh, when they blew up some Iranian arms in northern Syria, uh, up near Aleppo. And uh, that's a serious uh, uh, thing. Syria has had, Russia has had their back all along, and, and now there seems to be uh, a willingness of the Kremlin of, of Putin to back off a little bit. And uh, so that's something worth watching, see what's going on with that. Uh, another uh, Debka file article, Pakistan's new interior minister is an Al-Qaeda associate. Uh, that's pretty serious. Of course, that's where bin Laden was actually found and killed in Pakistan. They were hiding him. Uh, so there, we know that it's, it's, there are strong movements in Pakistan that are very radical. But now the new interior minister is actually an Al-Qaeda associate. Uh, that's going in the wrong direction there for Pakistan. Ocasio-Cortez, uh, whose nickname is AOC now, uh, says that cutting aid to Israel should be on the table. And uh, she says because, uh, and she links it to Net Netanyahu saying that uh, he's willing to start extending sovereignty into, the, into Judea and Samaria in the West Bank. And uh, she says, well, then the U.S. ought to consider cutting aid to Israel. And, uh, and that's just an, another one of the uh, anti-Semitic uh, attacks that she's famous for. Another new congresswoman, of course, is Ilan Omar. And the question in this article is, does she believe that Zionists and Jews are responsible for 9-11? Uh, there are some uh, indications that that might be her point of view. Uh, she has been, uh, she gave an infamous, infamous speech at a Hamas link uh, care uh, event, Com uh, Council on American Islamic Relations, uh, which uh, gave some real indication of her uh, anti-Semitic views. And uh, of course, just the fact that she spoke there reveals something because it is, it's been uh, officially linked to Hamas care as. Here's a quote, here's a tweet that she sent out Israel has hypnotized the world, may beep beep the God of Islam, awaken the people and help them see the evil doings of Israel. This is a United States Congresswoman from Minnesota. And uh, in this article is from Prophecy Newswatch about how the media is turning her anti-Semitism into making her like a victim, that she's being accused of anti-Semitism. Well, what do you think about this tweet right here? Uh, and the hashtag was Palestine and hashtag Israel. And so uh, I think that's pretty apparent. And uh, I'm praying that she'll be further exposed, that, that the, the common public in America will recognize uh, the anti-Semitism and where she's coming from. Uh, of course, her family comes from Somalia. And uh, she has, uh, she's always attacking the United States. She's even talked about uh, comparisons to Somalia. But in Somalia, she wouldn't be able to even speak, let alone be elected to Congress. So the hypocrisy is really, really rich. <laughs> well, here's an interesting development. Democrat senators call to restore aid to the Palestinian Authority. Six Democrat senators, senators including uh, Feinstein, you see her picture there, uh, introduced a resolution to restore aid. And of course, the U.S. has been cutting that off because of the activities of the Palestinian Authority and the fact that they pay salaries to terrorists in Israeli prisons. So uh, I don't think she'll get anywhere with that in the Senate, that's for sure. Here's a, some good news. Messianic leaders invited to Mar-a-Lago, uh, Trump's home in Florida, uh, to promote a pro-Israel initiative. And um, the head of the Messianic Jewish Alliance of America and other uh, uh, Messianic believers, Jewish believers in Messiah, Yeshua, uh, met uh, in Mar-a-Lago with the president and uh, 
that's a great uh, great thing good news I'm glad to see that and here's more good news Israeli uh, tourism is continuing uh, to break records every month is more than the previous month and every year has been more tourism than the previous year and uh, of course I'm excited about that because in less than two months now we're taking 30 people to Israel on a, on a tour and I'm excited about that this article is about uh, luxury hotels uh, beckon the torch of tourism ignites peace and the greater Israel's tourism triumph the more irresistible is the concept of peace with its neighbors because all, because all could gain from working together and uh, I think that's right uh, and uh, then uh, Israel Today has a good article here Israeli school kids find a rare 1600 year old gold coin now the coins and things are being found a lot in Israel it's it, because it has thousands of years of history but this one is particularly interesting because it's a it was a type this coin was uh, minted by the Byzantine Emperor Theodosius II whose edicts led to the abolishment of the Sanhedrin Council and a large-scale uh, immigration or Jews leaving the land of Israel and being scattered and uh, the interesting thing is this coin was found along a, a hiking trail in northern Israel up near Tiberias and the Sea of Galilee uh, which is called the Sanhedrin Trail and that's actually the name of the trail and he found a coin that commemorated the banning of the Sanhedrin uh, 1600 years ago so uh, kind of a little bit of, uh, of the humor of God I see in that and here's another little good news Israeli goalie recognized as the world's oldest pro soccer player this is an actual pro playing for a team in Israel who's 73 years old uh, he's a goalie <laughs> and uh, playing in a, a, a league in Israel uh, but but being paid a pro and uh, so it's a new Guinness world record for the oldest pro soccer player I just think that's kind of fun and then finally here's uh, this weekend springtime snow on Mount Hermon uh, and 20 centimeters of snow and that's about eight inches of snow uh, fell on Mount Hermon and uh, the interesting thing about that of course the Bible uh, says that there's some I'll let the little video go while I'm talking uh, but the Bible says uh, it's the dew of Hermon that waters the land the, the blessing on on Israel is like the dew of Hermon because the snow on Hermon falls down into the land of Israel and water it comes into the Jordan River and into the Sea of Galilee and waters the land and uh, we've been praying for rain and the rainy season actually ended a little while ago and yet this weekend uh, had eight inches of snow on Mount Hermon they actually closed the ski area today because of the extra snow and the roads being uh, unsafe probably be open tomorrow again <clears throat> but uh, anyway it's just fun to see it and uh, and rejoice our prayers are being answered that uh, it's snowing uh, even in April uh, on April what is uh, today's April 21st that's quite late to be having snow so praise God for that hallelujah well uh, let's close in prayer thank you for being with us uh, I praise God for our opportunity to be together we do just pray for the peace of Jerusalem Heavenly Father and Lord we to not today we know that like that gold dome in the picture uh, Islam still claims the city others have a claim on the city but it, the city belongs to you the land belongs to you and you have given it to Israel as stewards of it and Lord we just pray that you would continue to restore and bless and prosper Israel and and Lord I pray that the Israeli believe the Israelis would come to believe in Jesus as the Messiah uh, even all those that are now turning their hearts to the God of Israel I pray that you would the Holy Spirit would lead him right on to the Messiah himself and they'd recognize that that he came uh, the first time 2,000 years ago but that he's coming back very soon thank you father we pray for peace for Jerusalem and for rain in the Holy Land and snow. Thank you, Father. In the name of your Son, Yeshua ben Yehovah, Jesus, the Son of God, I pray. Amen. Thank you for being with us. God bless you. Come back next week. Bye-bye.